are celebrating the second Sunday in Lent. Our presider today is Father Drew, assisted by Deacon Dawn. Please stand and greet our celebrant as we sing, This is the Time of Fulfillment. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Greetings, my dear friends, on this beautiful, beautiful day. And it's the second Sunday of Lent, so we're well into the season now. The gospel for this Sunday is always the transfiguration of Jesus on the mountain top. So let us prepare to celebrate these holy mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. 
He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm is based on Psalm 116.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for all of us, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? Christ Jesus it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart from by themselves, and he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no, no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Just a few reminders about receiving Holy Communion. You know all these things, but it's good to remind everybody every now and then. So we're doing that at all the Masses today. So mainly, when you come up, uh, if you receive in the hand, which most of you do, uh, you make a throne and... Uh, little bow, the minister says, the body of Christ, you say amen. And when you receive, you place the body of Jesus in your mouth immediately. That's the main thing we want to say. Don't in any way walk off with the body of Christ in your hand, because then we have to come stop you. 
and we're worried. So uh, when you receive in the hand, immediately uh, place the host in your mouth and, uh, and that would be great. If you receive on the tongue, I always like to say, just be calm. Some people are not calm, they're nervous. And so they kind of lunge forward and that catches the minister off guard. Or they go up or they go down. When it's me or Father Chinson, they go down. <laughs> and uh, you know, they're 6'5 and you're 5'5 five five or whatever it is. But that really doesn't help. So the main thing, if you receive on the tongue, just be very calm, be still, don't go forward, up or down, put your tongue forward, and, and then that's the way it works so peacefully. Okay, the readings today, the first from Genesis, and Abraham, who's our father in faith, we always call him and the father of the Jewish people, our father in faith. But he's given a terrible command here. This is a kind of a strange reading in a way, but he's, he's told to take his son Isaac. Now Isaac was the son of their old age, he and Sarah, and he is told to take Isaac and offer him up as a holocaust. It's terrible. Um, and it's through Isaac that the covenant has been made and all the descendants will be blessed even till today. So it makes no sense at all. But Abraham is a man of obedience and faith. So he takes his son Isaac to the land of Moriah to a height and he puts the wood on which the Holocaust is going to be made on Isaac's shoulders. Actually, Isaac is an image of Jesus because Jesus carried the cross, the wood on his shoulders to Calvary, and Isaac is carrying all the wood on his shoulders too. And then when they get there, uh, Abraham is going to be obedient, uh, but thanks be to God, of course, he stops him at the last second, do nothing to harm your son. Uh, I see how devoted you are. Now see, the difference will be, this is an image of what the father will do with his son, who he did not withhold his beloved son, but gave his son to become Jesus, to give his life on Calvary. But thanks be to God, Abraham is not uh, asked in the end to offer up his son. But God the Father will offer up his for us. But, the, Lord, but uh, the God says, I see now how devoted, totally obedient, faithful you are. And um, so you continue to be my special one. And in you, all your descendants, even until today, will be blessed. Uh, all your descendants, as many as the stars in the sky, which you can't count, or the sands on the seashore, which you really can't count. So as many as that, your descendants will be blessed in your son Isaac and then Jacob, and then we know the rest of the story. So Abraham's faith is tested, and of course our faith is tested at times too. Uh, in various ways, and some don't pass the test. They, they just walk away. But there are certainly times in our lives where we be tested and will be in affliction. Now, Psalm 116 that we sang today, I love it. I trusted even when I said I'm sorely afflicted and when I said in my alarm, no man can be trusted. Uh, by the way, that's one place where uh, it's good that you say man, see, because no man can be trusted, but the women can say, well, they weren't including us. You know, we can, we can be trusted. Now, well, anyway, no, when I set in my alarm, no one can be trusted. But how can I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will raise 
and call on the name of the Lord Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And that's what we're going to do here in a few minutes. And it also says, my vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. And um, so that's what we're striving to do. Most, every, most of you have vowed lives and in marriage or, of course, in priesthood or diaconate. Or, and we strive to, to fulfill our vows as best we can with God's help, gracefully bearing with one another lovingly. And then the letter to the Romans, this is great too. All the scriptures are so great. If God is for us, who can be against us? Well, God is for us. Now, sometimes we don't feel that way. We feel like he's being rough on us. And God, are you really for me, Lord? Are you for me? But God is for us. He will see us through. Um, he was... He has handed over his own son for our salvation. He acquits us. He intercedes for us. He's our advocate. Now, in the scriptures, Satan is the prosecutor. He's the one bringing accusations and charges against us, false charges. And Jesus is our defense attorney. He is taking our case with the Father isn't that interesting? Satan means the accuser. So Jesus and the Holy Spirit are, are called our advocates with the Father. They're on our side all the way. And then it's the Gospel of St. Mark, the Transfiguration. Now Jesus takes Peter, James, and John up the mountain. I wonder if the other nine were a little jealous. Like I'm thinking about my patron saint, Andrew. See, Peter's brother, why didn't he get to be one of the top three there? But Jesus did select certain ones for certain things. And uh, so Andrew didn't get to go. Left out. Huh. Oh, that's my issues. Oh. Anyway, so Jesus took Peter, James, and John. And then he's on a high mountain and he tr is transfigured. His face, his clothes are dazzling. He reveals his divinity to these three. Now this is different from the way he was after the resurrection. For 40 days, the risen Lord appeared to his disciples, but he wasn't dazzling and glowing and radiant. He, he was different though. They didn't always recognize him, and he was different, but he was very much still seen in his humanity, but the transfiguration, this was divine. He was showing these three who he really was to give them encouragement for what was coming. So, and then while Moses and Elijah join and they're talking, Peter says, Rabbi, I, th I think he missed the mark. He's still calling him Rabbi there. This is God and showing himself, but he's calling him rabbi. It's good for us to be here, so let's do something. Build three tents. We want to stay here, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Then it hard, he says, it hardly, he hardly knew what he was saying. He was so terrified. So why did he say anything at all? What was Peter doing? Here was this amazing vision of divinity and Moses and Elijah, the law and the prophets are there. And then Peter feels like he has to speak up and do something. He didn't have to do anything. And he'd have to speak. It reminds me, in a 12-step program I heard, they have a, a way of saying that, well, the word is wait. Wait. And it means, why am I talking? Wait, I think I have it right. Why am I talking? It's good for us to remember because a lot of us talk too much and we talk at inappropriate times. We don't have to be talking now. There's something happening if we can just observe and be in awe and listen. Why am I talking? Wait, 
Well, Peter at that point, of course, he's not filled with the Holy Spirit yet. He'll be different after Pentecost, and he's really filled with God's grace, and he won't be so impetuous. But uh, why am I talking? But he feels like he has to do something, and then he feels like he has to say something. He doesn't. And so then the Father speaks, and he says, basically, be quiet, Peter. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. You're talking. Stop talking. Listen. This is my beloved son. So in the transfiguration, they see reality. They see the truth. All is well. And I always like to think that all of us have transfiguration moments in our lives. But when we're in affliction, we forget them. But all of us, me too, we've had moments in our life where we can almost see God as he really is. All is well. We're filled with joy and delight. We're overwhelmed with happiness. Uh, All is right with the world. We have these moments. And we need to remember them because our life isn't always like that. We have times of affliction and turmoil and confusion and even hopelessness. But remember, so the scriptures say, remember the wonders that God has done. It's important when we're going through a difficult time to remember. An essential part of the Christian life is the ability to remember. But when we're in adversity and suffering, it's like we've never had a happy day in our life. But we need to go back and remember those good days because God's going to get us there again. Doesn't seem so right now, but God's going to get us there a lot again. So it's not only our motto this year, give new signs and work new wonders, but we need to remember the signs and wonders he's already done in our past. Very critical. Even the Mass, we're doing this in memory of him. We're doing this as a memorial to him, in remembrance of him, and it makes present the very act of the passion, death, and resurrection in the presence of Jesus. So remembering is so important. God has worked in our lives, but we forget when we're going through a tough time. Now today, there's a lot of ladies in red over here. Wasn't that a movie? (laughs) Are y'all... describing the movie? I don't think so. That was Julia Roberts, wasn't it? I didn't see it, but I, I remember. All right. But um, you're here because you're the Women's Acts team, and the Women's Acts retreat is, Karen, it's what dates? May 2nd to the 5th, so it's about two months away. There's still room to sign up? A little bit. They're always powerful and they're always popular. And they're, they're transfiguration experiences, really. If you want a transfiguration, you come home with that. So I'm gonna just commission you all because you're gonna lead a lot of, re- about 40 retreatants through this. So if the team would stand up and I will lead you through this little commissioning. You have been called to the Acts Retreat team from our parish to be 11 to our church. The intent and purpose of the retreat is to build our parish community by helping others come to know Jesus. So do you, team, commit to be his faithful disciple and serve the women attending the Acts Retreat in May and each other as a sign of God's love for us? As a community of faith with the mission to serve others, will you combine the gifts and talents given to you by God as instruments of love to share with the women of our parish and each other in spreading the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ? 
Well, may our merciful Father give you the grace to live a life of faith. May his Son give you a servant's heart to be a living witness to the gospel. And may the Holy Spirit fill your hearts with love and your minds with wisdom to fulfill this mission. Lord, with the help of your people gathered here today, our whole parish, I commission this team to live out their baptismal call by using the Acts Retreat to witness to the gospel and help your people come to know Jesus Christ. Send your spirit upon them, Lord, and the retreat process that all this work may be done for your glory. I bless them. We all bless them and send them forth in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So do great things. I know you will. Thank you for being willing to joyfully give of your time to help others in retreat. So we love you. Thank you very much. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from light, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified and He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day. And according to the scriptures, he has sent us into heaven and is seated there. Heavenly Father, help us to remember the great moments of our lives when you've shown us your face, and uh, especially when we're in difficulty, and hear our prayers today. For Pope Francis, the bishops, and other leaders of the church, that they will always lead to our heavenly homeland, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayers. For our renewal of efforts of rec and reconciliation, May the world's leaders learn to break down the barriers that separate us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who may feel unwanted or unloved, especially children, may they find in this community a place of welcome and belonging. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, that we may find it wonderful to worship in the company of the saints of God. We pray to the Lord. That the sick, those listed in the book of the sick and their caregivers, may know healing and transformation, we pray to the Lord. Lord that those who have died will be surrounded by the saints in the heavenly kingdom, especially Catherine Mallory, wife of James Mallory and mother of Michael Mallory, Ernest Meyer, husband of Doris Meyer, 
John Adiba, brother of Suzette Lim. For them we pray to the Lord. Lord For our own intentions, we pause in silence. And for the soul of Lewis Meyer, we pray to the Lord. Dear Lord, continue to give new signs and work new wonders in our world, our country, our own lives, and our church, and give us a fruitful Lent. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today, the second collection is our monthly collection for social concerns ministry where we help so many people who come to us.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With spirit. Lift up your hearts. Up the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory to show, even by the testimony of the law and the prophets, that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall. So that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, 
the bread of life, and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. So let us pray that God's will be done in our lives in beautiful ways as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed open, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Behold, the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. As we come forward to receive the body and blood of Christ, please join us in the communion hymn number 653. There is a longing, number 653.
Let us pray. <clears throat> As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us while still on earth to be partakers even now of the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So be seated for a moment. Our friend Daryl Walker is going to share some thoughts with us. Thank you, Father Drew. Good evening, everyone. My name's Daryl Walker, and I'm blessed to be married to my wonderful wife, Laura, and we're accompanied by our four kids, Penelope, Sebastian, Matilda, and Elijah, the four redheads. <laughs> my testimonial speaks to the amazing men's ministries that we have here in St. Lawrence, and how they've helped me along my own faith journey. As men, we want to fulfill our role as leader, protector, provider, etc., etc. But it's, it's not easy. Of course, the sacraments are a great place, the best place to go. But still, that translation from our day-to-day -day cadence and the body of Christ can be difficult. And being men, we're unlikely to ask anyone for help. So, without me asking, in the spring of 2023, Deacon Don uh, invited me to the men's axe retreat. Being only around six months or so in the US, I agreed, and, and really maybe just to fit in. I kind of expected that I would participate, of course, in the retreat, but catch up on work emails in the evening when other people went to bed. I was wrong. <laughs> you have to go to the Axe Retreat to understand why I was wrong. But when I came home from those three days with my brothers in Christ, I was on fire with the Holy Spirit. From there, I jumped in. Uh, 5.30 Thursday mornings for the men's rosary group. It's spectacular, the experience of almost 50 men packed into the oratory praying together. And, and we're praying for you. Actually, the bond is so strong that even over the frigid Christmas uh, holidays, um, when the Ave Maria is closed, we just take the prayer outside to the parking lot. And I'll confess that coffee and donuts help. 5.30 in the morning is kind of antisocial, but there are, there are men's ministries throughout the week. Um, the, the, that man is you on Wednesdays, uh, the, the Knights of Columbus throughout. So scheduling is, is really no excuse. I've also got involved with, uh, as a permanent adorer on Saturday mornings at 6. And actually, I have my 10-year-old daughter for company with me every week. And it's this kind of fulfilling work that the men's ministry in St. Lawrence has given to me. I don't think I realized it, um, truly realized it, but as hard as it is being a real man in today's world, we have the best role model with us. His name is Jesus, and it's the work that the men's ministries have done uh, that have put that into sharp focus for me, and for that I'm forever grateful. I'd love it if you'd come and say hi at the hospitality desk after Mass, and we can talk more about my experiences or, or the men's ministries. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daryl, so much. We are so delighted to have you and your beautiful family in our parish and the four redheads. <laughs> Just a few other announcements. Uh, Monday night, 6.30 to 8.30, there'll be over 15 priests here in the church for Lenten confessions. So it's a real good opportunity to have so many priests here for Lent. And on the plaza is a giving tree tagline again Take a tag for a common household item 
and please bring your donation by next Sunday. And of course, every Friday is our Stations of the Cross, Liturgy of the Hours, and the great Knights of Columbus fish fry down in the parish hall. Okay, thank you for being here and being so faithful. And, uh, and we're especially thankful to the ladies in red over there. So the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Let us go forth this evening, singing number 484, Hosea. Jesus. 